Hello. Hello and welcome to the session on geospatial deep learning with ArcGIS.learn at the 2024 SV Developer Summit. A very warm welcome to those of you who are here in, in person and also to our audience uh, at, at sitting at home as this session is being live streamed. My name is Rohit Singh. Uh, I'm the develop, development lead of the geospatial AI capabilities in ArcGIS. And uh, joining me is Vinay Viswambaran. So Vinay, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. I'm Vinay Viswambaran. I'm a product manager focused on imagery and AI. Thank you, Vinay. So as we go through this session, this is an overview session, and we'll talk about all things uh, deep learning and AI across ArcGIS. We have a special emphasis on doing it through the ArcGIS Learn module of the, the Python API. And uh, for the live audience watching from home, uh, you could post your questions, and we'll try and answer them as they keep coming. And towards the end of the session, we'll also have about 10 minutes set, set aside for live Q&A for those of you in the room. And, and we'll also try to take questions from those uh, who are posting it via the live stream. So with that, let's get started. So as you know, AI is, is making remarkable progress. And uh, it, it gives the ability of human attributes, you know, things like, like vision or the ability to read to computers. And after decades of uh, AI winters, we are finally now seeing where AI is performing as well or, or even better than humans in some cases. And that's thanks to the progress this time made via deep learning. So that's the technology that's uh, behind the current revolution of, of AI. And it is giving us this uh, human-like characteristics, the ability to, to see and, and visualize things, uh, read and understand. Uh, there's, it can learn from data and adapt as the data changes. It, you know, these models can analyze data in various forms, and you can perform prediction, classification, clustering, or regression on GIS data, uh, or, or even create text as in the case of ChatGPT, but also uh, uh, images that you might have seen with stable diffusion and models like that using the generative AI capabilities. And GeoAI is uh, the intersection of AI with the science of GIS, and it's giving computers the ability to perform geospatial tasks. And that's something that we've been working on for the past five years, uh, and we already have extensive support for geospatial AI and geospatial deep learning in ArcGIS. And our computer vision models can, can see and extract features from imagery, from point cloud, even video. There's object tracking capabilities in FMV. Uh, we have NLP models, and we have tools in the GeoAI toolbox that work with unstructured text. And they can do things like uh, classify text or, or extract entities like addresses or attributes from raw streams of text, and also the ability to convert text from one form to, to another. Uh, we have extensive support for machine learning and deep learning within the platform. We'll show you some of those capabilities. And then coming to GIS data, uh, we can analyze vector, tabular, and time series data. There are tools to perform uh, regression or classification or clustering on that data. And uh, at the plenary, you saw how that could also be combined with text and images using the multimodal input support for, for AutoML. And coming to the generative parts, we've had support for generative models, like it used to be GANs, the generative adversarial networks, with, which allowed us to go from one data modality to another for imagery. Uh, and, and now it's uh, diffusion-based models riding the current wave in, in deep learning. And those are behind our super resolution model uh, uh, that, that you see here that can help you, you know, improve the resolution of your imagery. GeoAI is pervasive in, in ArcGIS, and uh, we've got support for imagery and remote sensing. That's where we started with. But now, over time, we've built out 
this capability in, for other data modalities. And we have extensive support for vector, tabular, and time series data, and also for text. Uh, so we, you know, it's ArcGIS is an end-to-end -end system for geospatial AI, and we, we provide you support for you know, tooling to go from your data access and data preparation to labeling that data. If, if you need to train your own models, uh, you need to label that and provide examples. You can train your models, or you could use pre-trained models that we provide, deploy them to production. And there's support for, for consuming models and also running the inferencing at scale. And once, once you use those models on unseen data or new data, you can then uh, you know, take action on that data, create dashboards or drive field activity. So when we look at geospatial deep learning, which is you know, uh, behind many of the geo, geo AI capabilities in ArcGIS, it really, the core of that starts in ArcGIS within our Python API. There's a module called ArcGIS.learn, and it's inspired by Scikit-learn, which has a very simple, it's an open source library, Scikit-learn, and it's, it's for machine learning, and it really simplifies machine learning. And inspired by that, we've created ArcGIS Learn, and within five lines of code, more or less, you could train a wide variety of models uh, in a very simple and consistent API. But not everybody needs to be a Python programmer. Even if you want to use geoprocessing tools, we have extensive support for training and using deep learning models for different data modalities. And uh, also, we provide a library of pre-trained AI models that uh, uh, make it really easy. So with that, I'll hand it over to Vinay to talk about the pre-trained models. Thank you, Rohit. All right, so this is the set of circles which Rohit just showed you. Uh, just quickly going over this again, the very heart of this, you have the Python API, which is really designed for the developer and the data scientist. And then you have the ArcGIS tools, right? We're simplifying it for the GIS analysts. We're simplifying it for the image analysts, wherein you just bring in your models. You can train a model. You can bring in your imagery or your different data sources and run inferencing. Super easy. And uh, lastly, with pre-trained models, we're essentially democratizing AI. We're making it super simple for our users. How many of you have used our pre-trained models? Awesome. How many of you all know about it but have never used it? Please use it. It's, it's content that is just available on the Living Atlas. You download the content. I'll show you a couple of demonstrations. You can use it within the API, with the tools. You can use online, pro, and enterprise. And what's better, now I've seen a lot of people who've come in saying, hey, the models don't necessarily work well in my country or in my geography or with my imagery. The Building Footprints US, for example, right? That model is designed for the U United States. But uh, what we've done is these models, we provided you with tools so that you can take these models you can fine tune it to your geography, you can fine tune it to your imagery and create models that you want. We have several partners who have done that, users who have done that, distributors. I'd like to call out um, our folks from Esri, Saudi Arabia and New Zealand. They've done some fantastic work. In fact, we've hosted their models as well. Continuing on the lines of pre-trained models, we started off with one pre-trained model, which was building footprints. We just wanted to you know, get a feel of the market, see how many users are interested in it. And we quickly got a lot of traction, a lot of downloads. There was a lot of interest in people reaching out to us. So quickly, I think within a couple of years, we went from a single model. Now we have more than 72, 72 different models that are hosted on the Living Atlas. And it's not just optical imagery, right? We have these models that work with uh, point cloud data, it works with text, it works with videos, so it works with essentially all data modalities, all data types that are available, that are natively supported within ArcGIS. 
And like I said, we started off with building footprints, but then increasingly we saw traction within each one of the different sectors as we works with, right? I've obviously not listed all of the models and sectors here on this slide. There's only so much you can do on a PowerPoint slide. So we've covered state and local, public safety, DNI, transportation, utilities, you name it, each one of those sectors are covered. And like I said, there's a range of models that are available. And reach out to us. I encourage you guys to reach out to us if you have training data, if you have ideas, if they're generic models which you think will be you know, useful to a larger audience, we will be more than happy to work with you to actually develop more models. Now I'll just take you through a quick journey where you can see some of the, the uh, models that we built. So you head over to the Living Atlas, search for deep learning packages, or just search for tools. And here you'll get a list of all the tools, sorry, all the deep learning packages. Like I said, there are more than 72 different models. And the good thing about these models, they're properly documented, so you can click on any one of these models. And as it comes up, yeah, here there's a proper description. It mentions what are the licensing requirements when you have to run these models, not when you're downloading. You, you can head over to a guide as well, so we tell you specifically how to run this in an enterprise in online and in desktop in ArcGIS Pro. And then we tell you specifically what kind of inputs are accepted. Like in this case, it, it's a 10 meter data set, works with rasters, mosaic data sets, image services. It's a Sentinel-2 image resource, the projection, the geography, everything is mentioned in here. And what's really cool is a lot of uh, users, they come back with, awesome, you've given us a model uh, I'd like to know the accuracy. So we provide that accuracy as well. So the precision, recall, F1, F1 score and the accuracy, all of these metrics are available within this. We provide some sample results as well. And a lot of these models, they're accompanied with story maps, which tell you uh, much more about these models in, the, in, the, you know, in terms of usability, how you use it, how is it relevant to you, which industries can use it, and what kinds of problems you can solve. Now, these are some quick examples that I want to go, uh, that I want to show you. Here's some imagery that we received from Maxar. It's 2D imagery, it looks a little skewed because essentially what we've done is we've taken it into scene, overlaid it on scene, and the use case here was create kind of a foundational GIS and create a 3D representation of the physical world using these models. So step one, we extracted roads, and all of this in online. In this case, I just use online. So there was no interaction, I just extracted roads. Next step, we extracted palm trees. And then next, we extracted trees. Then we had buildings. And here you get a proper view of this, right? now. Here's where I'd like to highlight the value of ArcGIS as a system and how we can really say GeoAI or Geospatial AI within ArcGIS is a comprehensive system, or ArcGIS is a comprehensive geospatial AI system. In that, what I mean is we don't stop at, stop at just extracting features. If you notice, there's a lot of textures that have come in place here. The trees have come to life. Everything is, you know, they've, we've got, everything is texturized over here. How do we make this possible? To start with, we took imagery, right? This imagery was a bunch of imagery which was managed using image server, one piece of technology. Once we got it into this, we use feature extraction and conventional packages, they stop at extracting features. They leave the onus of managing the imagery on you. You don't have to worry about that because they're web services that are being uh, ingested. We extracted the features, once we extracted the features, we ran it through City Engine. Essentially, we attributed the features with using City Engine rules, and then we rendered that in this map, in this scene. So you can see how you know, we got an end-to-end -end solution right here. This was an in interesting example. The country of Grenada, they reached out to us. They gave us uh, uh, 60 gigabytes worth of imagery, and they said, hey, create a foundational GIS for us. We run into... Uh, uh, floods, 
and landslides quite a bit. So give us information products which you think we could use, right? So we got the imagery, hosted it in ArcGIS Online, and then again, simply using the analysis tools, I can call analysis. Okay. Uh, come on. Okay. Analysis, raster analysis, deep learning, detect objects, pick your raster, choose a deep learning model. In this case, it could be any model that is local on my content within my organization or the living atlas. Now, I picked models from the living atlas, which included everything that I just showed you. So I just used one for building footprints. Obviously, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. We have the building footprints, which was extracted for the whole nation. And then uh, we extracted roads. And then we created a land cover map. Right? So they were, this is, you can look at it as a foundational GIS. But then again, like I said, it's a comprehensive geospatial AI system. So what we did is using raster functions, image processing algorithms, which within ArcGIS, we created a landslide map or a landslide susceptibility map, and then overlaid our features on that landslide susceptibility map. And once it draws, you'll see these roads or all of this infrastructure, how it's at risk. And here we have property, and this is a hotel, property that is at risk, and these are safe. So this lets you make, you know, it provides you with actionable insights. It's not just about extracting information and creating foundational content for you. It's actually providing you with insights over here. Next, I want to call out how we work with different data modalities. So that was imagery, optical imagery. Here we've got point cloud data. It looks like it's classified, but it's really classified based on height. So what we wanted to do was using our pre-trained models for point cloud classification. Um, we ended up classifying this into trees, utility power lines, ground and buildings. And some of you can probably see where I'm heading. I'm trying to identify uh, utility power lines that are going to get affected by encroaching vegetation. So once we've classified all of our data, here you have a clear visual representation of areas that are affected. And then you can do a lot, right? We have spatial tools, spatial analysis tools. You can create 2D maps out of this. You can overlay that. You can take it into workforce. You can take it into ops dashboard and create information products, which is basically providing with actionable insights. All right. So that was pre-trained models. What you probably seen at the plenary was text SAM models. And that's pretty interesting. Let me bring this up. OK. So there's the segment anything model that was created by Meta. We, we wrapped that into a deep learning package. We made it available on the Living Atlas. It's awesome where you have distinctly visible features where they stand apart. Right here, fields, they just stand apart. It's perfectly fine. You have planes that stands apart. We have ships in here. I think we've got yachts. Here we've got center pivot farms. These are yachts. Land parcels. But as smart as this model may be, Okay. It should draw any time now. Blame it on the Wi-Fi. Okay, at some point this will draw. But then trust me, as smart as this model is, it's equally stupid because it segments literally everything. So 
what we've done is we've extended the SAM model and we've called something called text SAM. Essentially, we can provide prompts and you can provide any kind of prompt, literally. In this case, you know, I want to extract trailers over here. I typed in trailers. I point to my model on the living atlas, text, Sam. Here's the model, load it. I provide trailers as my input text. It could be cars, it could be planes, yellow cars, literally. It takes that in as well. Go ahead, run this. It's a lightweight model. It runs this on my, it, it, I can run this on my uh, laptop, which really doesn't have a high-end GPU. And I've focused him only on this region, and you can see it's done a pretty good job. Now, the good thing is we've made this available on GitHub as well, so you can play with the code. And then we've taken this a step further. Right, you can now fine tune these SAM models with a method called low rank adaptation methodology. So here, essentially what we've done is we've frozen the heavy image encoders and we end up training just these smaller LoRa layers. So you go down all the way. And in this case, essentially what I've done is Typically, this model is trained to work with just three-band imagery, eight-bit imagery, but you can fine-tune this model to work with different data types, right? It works with SAR, it works with multispectral, and when I say multispectral, I mean more than three bands. And it works with elevation data as well. So here, I've taken a bunch of training samples, um, uh, building footprints, overlaid it on elevation data, Ran this, I think, within a span of half an hour. If you add all of this together, it's about 30 minutes. In about 10 epochs, half an hour, we got excellent results. We can take a quick look at it, and this is what it looks like. Right, so we went through pre-trained models as is. Then I talked a little bit about SAM. I talked a little bit about text SAM and how you can fine-tune TechSAM, how we fine-tuned it right now to work with elevation data as well. So there's a lot of content that is available for you today to work with. All of this is available today. So for those of you all who know about pre-trained model but haven't touched it so far, please do. And those of you all who know about pre-trained models and don't know about this, give this a shot. So Rohit talked about pre-trained models and then he jumped into tools. This is what I want to talk about, tools. Uh, uh, tools is really simplifying the experience for our users. They, it's wrapped around the Python API, right? Now the big uh, uh, benefit, there are several benefits of these tools. One is it's abstracting all of the complexities, all of the, the detailed parameters. It's hiding it away from the users, really simplifying AI for you. It's available, all of these different tools, they're available in Pro through the Image Analyst extension. And some, some of the tools are available in Pro Advanced, and then we have some in 3D Analyst. Likewise, we have these capabilities, only inferencing capabilities in online, and then you have the complete capability available in Enterprise. And what's interesting is we have something called Deep Learning Studio. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. I would categorize that as tools as well. So there were tools, and this is what it looks like. We have two parts to actually work through this. And the primary reason why we have these tools and we have the Python API, which Rohit is going to talk about a little more, is for those users who want to go beyond pre-trained models. right? So here we have our UI tools, which you can do classification, object detection, each one of those different tasks. You can train deep learning models. And the second is the Python API. And the Python API. OK. So the ArcGIS API for Python, we've exposed through the ArcGIS API for Python, we've exposed ArcGIS Learn, ArcGIS.Learn module. 
And like I said, this is essentially designed for the developers and the data scientists to easily train uh, and use deep learning models. And again, it's not necessarily just for the data scientists. You'll see in the subsequent slides, we've significantly simplified this API. It's just a dozen lines. Previously, it was a bunch of code, a bunch of code you had to write to actually train a model and run in Fritzing. Now we've, like I said, abstracted the whole thing. The level of abstraction has significantly simplified the API. Why ArcGIS Learn? It's integrated within ArcGIS. It's part of the ArcGIS API for Python. You can have a singular notebook that does a bunch of things, AI just being one component of the whole thing. We have a simple and consistent API. In that, what I mean, it's typically just these six lines of code. Whoops. It's just these six lines of code which you'll always use. The only thing that changes is the model, irrespective of the data type, irrespective of the data modality, or irrespective of the problem that you're trying to solve. Typically, all you'll have to, mostly, all you have to do is change the model type in here. And we have a large collection of geospatial deep learning models for object detection, classification, so on and so forth. Object detection itself, I think we have six different uh, models, and we have several backbones as well. And there are other things, you know, we mentioned over here, batteries included. Essentially, there are a lot of best practices that are built in. The learning rate finder for you all, for the data scientists in, you, in here, or for you all who are aware of what a learning rate is, uh, we have automated that process. Um, then we've enabled transfer learning as well, so you could use one of our pre-trained models to get um, get going, and then we've implemented things like early stopping, so as soon as we see the curve uh, um, declining, or it's not improving anymore, we stop training. Now I'll quickly go through an end-to-end -end deep learning process. First I'll show you something in Pro, show you some information products, and then I'll show you the API. So in this case, this is the Woolsey fires, perimeter of the fires, um, uh, that occurred sometime in 2019, the Woolsey fires. And the use case here was we worked with the USAA. Uh, what they wanted to do was disperse insurance claims before customers even came forth. So there were about 10,000 building structures in the perimeter of the fire. Uh, first things first, what we did is we captured around 800 training samples and it's something like this. And we have tools to enable you to do that. So for instance, I can go imagery, deep learning tools, label objects for deep learning, and you can go through the process of actually labeling your data. And then you can train deep learning models using geoprocessing tools, but we have a wizard in here as well. You'll see that in subsequent pre presentations where, which are not so advanced, but then we have a wizard in here as well, which will run through the whole process of training a deep learning model. But in this case, once I captured my training samples, I went to the export training data tool, provide my input imagery, my output folder, my input feature class, which was my training samples, the 800 features that I just talked about, provided a class value field, and the field was just stating if it's damaged structures or undamaged structures, and then we tweaked each one of these parameters, which is the tile size, tried size, and uh, uh, specify the metadata format. This is critical. It really depends on the kind of problem that you're trying to solve. So for object detection, you need specific metadata formats. For classification, you need specific metadata formats, so on and so forth. So we run the tool. Once you run the tool, it gives you a bunch of chips. Those chips are fed into uh, uh, the next tool, and here's where you train your deep learning model. You provide your input training data, which is your chips, an output folder where you're going to write out the model. You can specify a model type, if it's object detection, or in this case, object classification. You can start with a pre-trained model as well, and then you run the tool. Once you run the tool, you get a deep learning model. Typically, you don't always get that. Right, Rohit? 
you don't I yes don't most of the time yes, right. most of the time yes so while that pops up uh, let me go back Okay, we will go back to that pro instance. I promise you it'll work. But uh, uh, in the meantime, what we did once we extracted those features, this is really level three of exploitation, right? This is the part where the rest of the ArcGIS system comes into play. We take the features, we've attributed those features, we've created, a, we've enriched it with additional information and here I've created a configurable dashboard which you can show to stakeholders and for any given area, it gives you a dynamic representation of the average damage building values, the total number of damage buildings, average block population, so on and so forth. And the whole thing can be done using notebooks as well. So here's a sample. So here's my sample. And these are all samples that are available. You can download them. There are more than 50 different notebooks that are available uh, as part of our ArcGIS API for Python documentation. And here, you know, we give you a brief understanding of the methodology, what we're doing behind the scenes. You import the necessary libraries. You connect to the uh, organization, to the enterprise in this case. And this feature layer essentially is my training data. You specify your input raster. This is my input layer. And then you specify the raster store where essentially your training data, your chips are going to be written out to. If you remember, I talked about export training data. It writes out chips. So those chips, they get, in, they get written out to that folder. And then you get into the model training uh, section. And if you remember, I told you it's just five lines of code. But here, we're going through extensive documentation trying to explain to you what is what and you know, clean explanation of the story and what we're doing. And then you can visualize the training data once you've exported the chips. Here you load the model architecture, which is a feature classifier in this case. And this is the part where we do the automatic learning rate finder. And then we call the fit function. And you can see slowly the accuracy, it converges to about 97%. So it's a pretty damn accurate model. And once you have that, you can run inferencing either locally, you know, after you download the model, or you can uh, scale this out using enterprise, or you can push the model to online and run the model in online. So here, like I said, we have our tools coming back to that. We get into deep learning under the image analyst toolbox. We have the deep learning tool set. And here we've got a collection of tools. You can train your deep learning model over here. You can classify objects, which is the inferencing aspects, right? So once we've captured training samples, step one, we exported training data. Step two, we train our deep learning model. And step three, we run inferencing. And here, basically, we've classified 10,000 buildings. This took me about half an hour to run, the whole running through the whole process. And if you look at this, the accuracy is probably better than that of a trained assessor. Each one of the buildings are perfectly classified. Now, going back to that point where I said it's a complete system, once we've classified these features, I took the features, ran it through network analyst, and used the damage structures as barriers. And then we could identify areas or shelters that are within, where can we drop shelters that are within 20 minute walk time for anybody who's affected? So that was a complete end to end workflow, right? I showed you how you did the whole AI side of things, or the whole deep learning side of things using Pro. And then we use the features, extracted information, got actionable insights over here, conveyed that information through dashboards to our users, 
for the developers and data scientists, we have notebooks that do the same thing. Next, we'll go through the different modalities, data modalities, first one being imagery. Natively, we support all of the different uh, imagery types within ArcGIS, as in you can run deep learning on any one of these. So you can use 3D scenes, you can use video, point cloud, overhead imagery, time series, and street view imagery, right? We started off with just overhead imagery, native imagery, which was either satellite, aerial, or uh, uh, drone collects. And we have several tasks. Previously, it was just object detection and pixel classification. Now we do things like object classification, 3D object detection, point cloud classification, image enhancement, like in the movies, super resolution. You see something at a low resolution. You can train these models so that you get a higher resolution version of that image. These are just different models that we support for the different tasks. For pixel classification, we have a list of models. These are all the different uh, model architectures that are supported. Object detection, we've got a bunch. And we have best practices that are documented in which case do you use which model, right? There's always like, hey, Vinay, you've got seven different models over there. Which one am I supposed to use for object detection? But we have documented best practices. It's part of the documentation. We have blogs, blogs and learn lessons as well, which tell you which model to use in what, what scenario. If, if, you're, if false positives are acceptable, if false negatives are acceptable, if performance is what you need, if high accuracy is what you need, each one of these things, you can switch between different models. We do have AutoDL, which is another tool. It automatically picks the, the best available model for you. CycleGAN is, it's, it's an interesting model. You can see an example here. We actually train the model. So horses look like zebras. Don't know why I would do that, but then, hey, it was fun. You could go from satellite imagery to the, the rendered Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there are valid use cases for that. But in this particular use case, I put that screenshot there. I was like, why would I do that? But yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Now, before I hand it over to Rohit, who's going to talk a little bit, a little more about the APIs, quickly, I'll just talk about some of the, uh, the productivity enhancements that we've added into the system. One is labeling. So we've added something called AI-assisted labeling, and this is going to beef up even a little more in the next release. But here I can just go click, 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 and it picks features and easily enables you to capture these bounding boxes, and you can edit them as well simultaneously. Here there are building structures as well. Moving forward, we're looking into enhancing this even more. So. Maybe we will integrate text SAM into labeling. Maybe. Uh, next is AutoDL. You remember the part where I told you we've got a ton of models, or uh, uh, right here, you can see just for object detection. There are about seven or eight different models, and we've got a bunch of uh, backbones. Which one am I supposed to use? Now, yeah, as a deep learning ninja, yeah, maybe you can figure that out or based on documentation, based on blogs, based on experience, you know which model you want. But a lot of our users, they are overwhelmed with this. So it's kind of a double-edged sword where you provide too many models. So with AutoDL, you provide all the models you want the system to evaluate. It will evaluate these models for you, provide the training data, and you're done. It gives you the most optimum uh, model that has to be used. Inferencing, we've added a new capability. Actually, it was just the uh, last release, where you can extract multiple features from a single image. So essentially, you can provide multiple models and multiple geoprocessing models as well. So you can combine deep learning models, geoprocessing workflows to create some information products, and all of this on a single on a single image in one pass. So again, it's just a productivity enhancement that we've added. Deep Learning Studio is one of the tools that I talked about. It is a web application that is available with Image Server. How many of you all have Image Server here? Okay, a few of you all. 
How many of those who have a mid server know about Deep Learning Studio? Not all of you. Okay, so Deep Learning Studio, you just get it with Image Server. As long as you have Image Server, you can just deploy Deep Learning Studio. It's just an instant app. Uh, uh, sorry, you just invoke it through the app launcher. It's an end-to-end -end app. The whole purpose of that is collaboration. Now, when you're doing deep learning, you're not working on creating five training samples, training a deep learning model quickly, running inferencing. It's typically done on large volumes of images, and you've got to capture 9,000 uh, uh, 9, training samples, 10,000 training samples, it can be daunting, right? And that's where you collaborate. If you have a bunch of GIS interns or your kids are really cooperative, awesome. If not, Deep Learning Studio does that job. It really helps. You can assign tasks to different groups, to different teams, and then you can scale out your training, uh, sorry, capturing training data, you can scale out your model training, you can compare models, uh, and then you can run inferencing, leveraging your enterprise, because all of this is deployed on the enterprise. So everyone participating on this, they use a thin client while the enterprise does the heavy lifting. Quickly, I'll just go over point cloud as well. So imagery was one data modality. We typically bundle in 3D and point cloud as well as part of all imagery and remote sensing data sources. Uh, what can you do? You can do point cloud classification and what we've recently added is object detection. You can detect objects and create multi-patches from 3D or point cloud data. There are enhancements to the ArcGIS Learn module as well. There are several uh, model architectures that we've added for both point cloud classification and object extraction. This is a quick demonstration of uh, uh, point cloud classification and object detection. In this particular case, I just want to highlight we've had point cloud classification for a bit. You can pick points, and I showed you that with the pre-trained models. But this is what we've newly added. We've captured a bunch of training samples over here, and the rest of the workflow is the same. You prepare your data set. Once you've captured the training sample, you can export this training data. Each one of these tools, similar to what you just saw for imagery, and you will see for point classification as well. You pick your point cloud data. You can train the point cloud uh, object detection model. And lastly, detect objects, essentially your inferencing. And here are what the results look like. Cars that have been detected using that model. They're all extracted as multi-patches. And the same thing can be done in indoors as well. So here we've got an indoor data set. Pick a certain floor. We captured some training data. And here we could extract desks, doors, and other features. Rohit, you want to take yeah. over? And with that, I'll switch to this. it over to Rohit. Which All right. Thank you, Vinay. Which one is yours? Uh, number three. So uh, that was imagery and 3D, we also have extensive support for other data modalities. And one of the most pervasive uh, GIS data that, that's used is vector, tabular, and time series data. So the kind of tasks that you can do with this are uh, doing regression. So you want to predict a continuous variable based on other explanatory variables. Or you want to do classification. You want to categorize a GIS feature or uh, or, 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 a, or a row in a table as some, uh, some, some class. And to do that, uh, we have support for auto ML. So in the case of imagery, it's deep learning, uh, you know, which, is, which is best. But when it comes to tabular data, uh, it's, we, we get good results with deep learning, but also with machine learning models such as random forest, or gradient boosting. So what we let you do is that you run AutoML, and that lets you train a bunch of models 
uh, and it finds the best model given your data and the time that you make available to it, and it provides you with a leaderboard uh, where it evaluates multiple models, and uh, it even ensembles them to, to get the highest performance when needed. And for, uh, we've added a number of enhancements to AutoML, such as you, you would have seen in the Dev Summit plenary, the ability to provide multimodal data. That is, not only can the model learn from tabular data or categorical data, but also from images and text associated with that feature. And it can make a more informed decision. Additionally, uh, for fairness in machine learning, that's an area of, of growing awareness, and we've added the ability to measure and mitigate bias using AutoML on criteria that you define. So there, there's metrics on which to measure the bias, and, and then there are certain standard techniques, and we use the technique of reweighing to, uh, to create models that are better when compared to the base model in not just uh, not preventing the amplification of bias, but in mitigating that bias in, in that model. And coming to time series data, we have uh, uh, models using deep learning techniques like LSTMs and transformers that uh, let you do forecasting in, in the future on space-time cubes. And these are available both in the ArcGIS Learn module as well as in the Geo AI toolbox in ArcGIS Pro. Coming to the feature and tabular data, many of you might be available, uh, uh, aware of the scikit-learn library, and that's a very popular open source library for training machine learning models. And we've integrated ArcGIS Learn with scikit-learn under the hood, so you could train all of these models using the ML model class in, in ArcGIS Learn. And in addition, there's the fully connected network, which really is a deep learning network that you can use to train your uh, machine learning, you know, sorry, models on tabular data. And we already spoke about AutoML. And similarly, there's a time series model class in ArcGIS Learn that uses LSTMs and transformers. You specify which model backbone do you want. And using that same pattern of preparing your data, fitting the model to the data so it learns from it, and then predicting or saving the model for later use. When it comes time to train a machine learning model, you know, this is what the type pipeline typically looks like. You, you define the problem, you collect the data, but then you, you need to pre-process that data, you need to do the model training, tune the parameters, interpret the results, and you do that for one model, but then there are many different model architectures or algorithms like LightGBM or XGBoost, and you, we, you know, there's no defined answer which might give you the best results. And that's where AutoML comes in, and you can pick which models you want, and uh, it'll evaluate them in the time that you provide it. So let's quickly look at uh, how it would work with the ArcGIS Learn API. So this is the, the Python API website, and we've got samples listed here, and you could go to, to deep learning and tabular data forecasting and see this notebook on prediction of energy for so solar photovoltaic power plants using weather variables. So coming to the, what's, being, what's happening here, we've got a number of so, solar power plants, and they have tabular data which lists like the wind speed and the day length and precipitation. So this is what that data looks like. It's really a time series. We could also train a time series model, but here we are training uh, a machine learning model. So let's see, uh, when we create that model, you know, the model building part, here we are using the fully connected network. So those familiar steps, you first prepare your data, 
and you can see what the data looks like, a small batch of data. You create your model, pass in that data, and then find a good learning rate, fit the model to the data, and then you can use it for prediction or, or evaluating it. So with a, a deep learning model, we can uh, see the results and we can also measure the, the accuracy. So we are able to achieve an R square of 0.85 on this data. Now, I could do the same thing using AutoML. So let's, let's look at the kind of results when we let AutoML do the same task. And here, it's, it's the same data set, and this time we let AutoML train the model. So once again, the familiar pattern, you just create that AutoML class, pass in that data, do the fit, and here it's evaluating many different models. And the best results here are uh, an R square of 0.89, with one being the score of a perfect model. So very easily, it's evaluated a number of models, and it, it provides you uh, this, this leaderboard to, to see how the models are doing. And additionally, it also tells you uh, uh, which factors or, or features are uh, responsible for that outcome. So you can get uh, the most important uh, features to, to make that prediction. So some interpretability. And finally, let's look at text, unstructured text. And uh, that's an area you know, that large language models are, are now finally, they had their ImageNet model, uh, ImageNet moment with ChatGPT. We also have NLP capabilities integrated for geospatial AI tasks. You can categorize text, that's text classification. You could extract entities from text or, or transform text. And we've also added model explainability. So, once again, you could see, uh, ask the model, like what factors within the text let you come up with this prediction? So some visibility into the model. So uh, these are the, the main tasks for NLP. I briefly mentioned those to you. I think we can go straight to, we are also running short on time. So this is entity recognition given a passage we are able to extract different entities. And we have a pre-trained model that you can use for this task as well. Uh, this is text transformation. So if you've got malformed addresses and you want to uh, fix them, uh, put them in a right format, you could use a text transformation model. And, and this is classifying text. So it could be, here we are classifying an incomplete address and saying which country it belongs to, which could be used to assign the right geocoder or locator. But you could have tweets, and you may, maybe you want to see if, uh, if it's about vaccine hesitancy or if it's about uh, some emergency situation and classifying them, putting that on, on a map. So what we saw is that ArcGIS is an end-to-end -end system, you know, closing the loop. We saw how we can go from data access to all the steps in training the model, deploying it, and, and running inferencing, and taking uh, actions you know, on the field from the results. So here are a few resources where you can learn more. Some of the things that we had shared are available here. And I believe now we can take questions, uh, both from the room, and then later we'll also uh, try to take a couple of questions from the uh, online audience. Anyone have any questions? That was super clear, looks like. <laughs> no questions, anybody? Yes, there's a question there. So if, if I understood the question right, it's about if we could provide more information on the time series forecasting. OK, sure. So uh, in the ArcGIS Learn API, uh, you could go to uh, the, the API reference. And here, 
ArcGIS Learn uh, is listed, and you can see how extensive uh, it is. Like there's data preparation methods, automated machine learning, all of the imagery capabilities. But here, in there, you'll also find information on the feature tabular and time series models. And there is this model called the time series model that, that you can use for this. And additionally, in, in ArcGIS Pro, there's uh, the in the GeoAI toolbox, there are methods, uh, there's a time series AI tool set that, that you can use to do it within Pro. So you can train a time series forecasting model and, and you can perform forecasting using this. Sure, so the question is, which deep learning framework is actually used to train the time series model? And here uh, we are using, uh, uh, let, let, let me just load that, yeah, it's, it's right here. So we used a combination of deep learning networks like LSTM and transformers. These are deep learning networks. Transformers is the same model architecture that's used in GPT. That's the T in the trans GPT actually uh, for transformers. And it's giving great results for all kinds of sequences. And you know, spoken uh, text is sequences, but time series is also sequences. And additionally, uh, we've seen that Convolutional neural networks can be adapted using 1D convolutions on time series data, and these are the models that we also additionally provide you for time series forecasting. Sure. You're welcome. Is there any other question? Yep, there is somebody there. So if I understood the question correctly, it's about uh, AI assistance in ArcGIS Pro that let's say if you've got a model builder, could there be some kind of a tool or assistant that can describe the, what the model builder is doing? Is, is Uh, so uh, I, I'm I'm not 100% sure I got the question. I think you're talking about the Pro Copilot. Is that what I see? So it's talking about the 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 upcoming you know things that we are working on uh, as adding AI to the experience of using ArcGIS to to help uh, you know uh, use generative AI to to provide more information on what you're doing and doing assistant kind of works. And uh, that's something that's ongoing R&D at this moment. Uh, it's, uh, there's no uh, definite timeline that we can assign to that. But that's, uh, we are certainly looking at large language models and how they could be used to enhance the experience of Arc using ArcGIS. Sure. And is there any other question as well? Okay, doesn't look like we have any other questions uh, in, in the room. And for the online audience, is there any question? That uh, we... Yeah, I think one was on the, um, wait. Let's just see some of the start questions. Yeah, I think one of the things is, are the examples shown already available or will it be shared after the conference? If it's already available, where can you find them? I think you can mention the Python uh, API. So if you just search for ArcGIS API for Python samples, it'll take you to a whole collection of uh, sample notebooks. Yes, so here uh, you can go to the Python API website, developers.arcgis.com slash Python, go to samples, and all of our samples are uh, 
categorized in the deep learning section. So there are multiple nested categories, uh, you know, for, for imagery, whether you want to do object detection, there's a whole bunch of samples, including, you know, detecting lunar craters uh, using deep learning. But, but uh, for, for many different tasks, there's an extensive collection of samples that you can reference. There's also learn.arcgis.com. If you go there, search for deep learning, uh, uh, learning paths, it's a pretty exhaustive list of uh, learn lessons that are available. You can just download it. We provide the data and everything else. Okay, I think we are now at the end of the session. So is there any final question that we want to take? Uh, licensing, licensing comes up a lot. We could quickly just let you know about the licensing. Well, if you want to run any of the imagery related models or workflows, you need uh, image analyst extension on desktop. For 3D object detection or segmentation, you need the 3D analyst. And the ones that need advanced are... The, the GeoAI toolbox needs the advanced license in ArcGIS Pro. And if you want to scale it using image server, um, using enterprise, you need the image server license. And for online, as of now, you need ArcGIS image for ArcGIS online. Okay, with that, we have come to a close of this session. Thank you very much. We will be around at the sides.